12. Man's, quote, rights, end quote. About 40 years ago, perhaps more, when I was somewhat younger, I spent an hour or two one day in an argument with a self-consciously bohemian young artist. His talent was real, but had little chance against his way of life and his ego. He died before he was 31 years old. His hostility against God was intense. He did not believe in God, and yet God was very real to him, in that at all points he was at war with God. He held that, if God existed, he was a monster for his treatment of mankind. Man was not meant to live this way, he declared. Two or three days later, I suddenly realised that I had neglected my best argument against him. His contempt for his fellow men was intense and pornographic, and yet, in indicting God, he did so in the name of man, humanity, or mankind. It came to me that he, and so very many like him, meant themselves and themselves only when they said mankind. Man was not meant to live this way. Earth could be fair. Why does God bar the gates to paradise? Even the Bible admits that he does so, this bohemian charged. Genesis chapter 3 verse 24. This long-dead young man came to my mind again this week when I received a telephone call from a very dedicated pastor who was ousted for preaching on God's law. A sermon on Leviticus chapter 18, Sexual Sins, especially upset the many antinomians in that sizable congregation. At the meeting which dissolved the pastoral relationship, one reprobate stated that general feeling in summary form, His preaching never made me feel good. The purpose of God, of his word, of preaching, and of the church, is thus seen as making man feel good. God should see to it that every man has his share of heaven in this life and the next. In another church during this week, the members of an adult class insisted that the meaning of the name Jesus is that God saves his people from hell. They were dismayed when told that it means that God saves his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 People nowadays do not want to be saved from their sins. That is where their life and hope is. Man feels that paradise or heaven should be his due. The power of the modern state lies in its promise to deliver heaven on earth, to give man deliverance from hell, but not sin, into a world paradise which belongs to every man by right, by virtue of being human. The psalmist, however, reminds us that we are God's creatures, made to serve and praise him, not ourselves. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing, Know ye that the Lord, he is God, it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100, verses 2 and 3. To be called the sheep of his pasture was more than lovely imagery to the psalmist. It meant that we are God's to be used at his will, to be sheared, to produce, and to live and die at his will. A more anti-humanistic image is difficult to imagine. Solomon is equally forceful and clear. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 1 to 4. Again and again, rebellious and sinful men seek to justify what they have done, and sometimes what they have not done, by prefacing their excuse with the words, 
I'm entitled to something out of life. All we are entitled to is to serve the Lord with gladness, because the Lord hath made all things for himself. In other words, life is God-centred, not man-centred. Our misery comes in attempting to make it man-centred, which is as futile an effort as the sad dream of blotting out the sun and destroying it. Man is not God, and he cannot compel life to revolve around himself. Has man then no rights as he faces life, and as he is confronted by God? Before answering that question, let us first look at the idea of rights. Two ideas are implicit in the term. First, rights implies justice. The right, a belief that one has a just claim against another. Second, it implies a claim. Thus, both justice or rights and a claim are involved. I can have a position of right against another man and claim upon him, or he upon me, but never against God. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 100, verse 3. And the Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 4. But this is not all. Even my right against my neighbour is invalid, except in terms of God's law. Unless my claim to justice is grounded on God's law, it is no claim at all but a pretension. As T. Robert Ingram has shown in What's Wrong with Human Rights, 1979, the doctrine of human rights is a substitute for God's law. The language of God's law, moreover, is not the language of rights, but of blessings and curses. Deuteronomy chapter 28 In my calling I have no rights as I face God. I am, by his sovereign pleasure, the subject of blessings and curses as I obey or disobey him. The same is true of my calling as a son, as a father, and as a husband. In not one of these areas, nor in any other, can I claim any right because of my person, sex, office, status, or any other thing but only by virtue of God's law and my relationship to God. I have no right to claim from others anything God requires of them when I myself will not give God what he requires of me. In a very devastating passage, God, speaking through Hosea, declares, My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them, For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err, and they have gone a-whoring from under their God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains, and burn incense upon the hills, under oaks and poplars and elms, because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom, and your spouses shall commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore, the people that doth not understand shall fall. Hosea chapter 4, verses 12 to 14. The Lord here speaks to the men of Israel, to the males. They are faithless and disobedient. They have gone a-whoring from under their God, that is, are faithless to him, and they therefore treat their obligation to their wives as lightly. If we are faithless to God and contemptuous of him, then we will certainly be so to our superiors and inferiors, to our parents, wives and children. The men of Israel had carried their apostasy to the point of taking part in false religious exercises with their whores. Having dissolved their relationship of faithfulness and obedience to the Lord, 
God dissolves the sanctions of the law, that is, the death penalty, against their daughters and their wives, for their fornications and adulteries. Instead of a particular judgment, there will be a general judgment. For they have sown the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. Hosea chapter 8 verse 7 The only way to prevent this disaster is the way of faith and obedience. Man's life and freedom means faith and obedience. It means God's law, not a mythical concept of human rights. When we treat any privilege God's law gives us as our right, we claim what is of sovereign grace as a natural right. No man can claim that his sex, birth, status, position or authority is by right. Paul's blunt warning is to the point. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 I cannot disobey or deny God and claim by right any gift, office or privilege which God's creation and his law give me. We cannot have God's law world without God. When we deny the Lord, we implicitly deny all things else that his creation, providence and law give us. God then proceeds to dissolve these things and to give us the whirlwind. Man sees heaven and paradise as his right. In his sin, he says in effect to God, Serve me at my will and prove that you are indeed the Almighty. Man says to all around him, Jump at my command, and bow to my every word as final wisdom. Man wants paradise at his beck and call, and people too. But the sinner is at every point frustrated. Whatever he may get or command is always futile, because he always carries hell within him. His only hope is to be converted and to say with the psalmist, Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding, that I may learn thy commandments. Psalm 119, verse 73.